Hello, I'm going to make a quick video on optimization and cadence. For an example, I'm going to optimize a simple transistor voltage divider circuit to output 650 millivolts, just like this circuit on the right. You'll notice that I have a power supply of 1.2 volts, and I have widths and lengths for the transistor set to 500 nanometers. Uh, those are just random. I'm going to change those. So first step is to build the circuit. Second step is to set your global variables, and I'm going to do that right now. Went ahead and uh, added global variables for the widths and lengths. Uh, WP and LP stand for width and length for the PMOS, and WN, LN are width and length for the NMOS. So now that we have those set up, we can go over to launch and open up ADEXL. We're going to want to do create a new view. Press OK. This window will come up, create new ADEXL. Everything is default just how we want it, so we're just going to press OK. And this will open the ADEXL window. First things first, uh, check the test tab. Click the drop down menu, then click to add test. Choose design, we're designing the, vol the voltage divider, so we're on the correct design. We can go ahead and press OK. And I did this earlier, so I have some lengths and widths set here. We can just set these all to 500 nano. Okay. So in the analysis window, we're going to right click, press edit. We're going to add a DC analysis because we're going to be running DC uh, simulations and saving the DC operating points, such as region of uh, operation. We can press X out of that, and we're going to come up here and run the simulation. Okay, interactive point zero is finished. Now we can go to the output setup and start adding expressions. We can right click here and do add expression or do it this way, it's a little longer. We're gonna add an expression, we're gonna double click under details, and we're gonna open up the calculator. And First, let's add some operating points of the transistors. So I'm going to click OP, and it's going to open our schematic. And I'm going to click the PMOS. I'm going to click this drop-down menu, and we're going to look for region. And it's uh, pretty far down. Here it is. We're going to click region. And it will automatically put it in the calculator. We're going to send buffer expression to ADE outputs. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the NMOS transistor. There it is. I'm also interested in the output voltage. So I'm going to do VDC and then click V out. We'll send that. Then I'm also interested in how much current this device draws. So I'm going to click the negative terminal of this power supply. We'll add that as well. I think that's pretty much everything we need right there. So we can close the calculator and go back to ADEXL. Alright, I'm going to click the Run Simulation button. And we're in Region 2, which means both the transistors are in saturation. Our output is less than 650 millivolts. And that's how much current our device is drawing. So now we can mess around with specs, weight, and the output setup. For spec, basically all you do is you put what you want. So for the operating point of the transistor, I want it to be 2. So I'm going to add a range of 1 to 3. 
for both of them. For VDC out, I'm going to do a range again. I'm going to do 645 to 655. And I'm not too worried about the current, so I'm not going to add a spec for that. Under weight, basically this prioritizes which spec you want to meet. So I'm more interested in keeping these devices in saturation. Under units, self-explanatory, this is unitless, this will be a, a volt. Digits, we can have three digits, three significant figures. Notation, I normally leave as default. And then suffix, we can do M for millivolt. Okay, and we don't need to re run the simulation again. We can just come here. And it will do all of it for us. So we see we have red, which means obviously we did not mean the specification. And it tells us right here that we failed. Now we're going to go over to the global variables and give it uh, a range for the optimizer to sweep. 250 nanometers to micron and for width side 250 nanometers to 10 microns. Next step is to go over here and we're going to switch to local optimization. Next, you have to edit your reference point. This is the starting point uh, for the simulator. And I'm just going to tell it to start off at 500 nanos for each one. Okay, there we go. Next, we have the simulator options. You don't always have to mess with this. But it's interesting, you can edit the algorithm. So I'll do that one. You can experiment which one works best, I guess. Valuation, I'll leave it conditional, starting point, reference, and all specs met. Press OK. Now we can press play and start optimizing. With local optimization and a simple circuit like this, it will probably take less than a minute. If you want to make your screen look super cool, you can go up here to basic, like optimization. Now it adds uh, even more colors to your screen to impress your friends. Okay, we're all green. We're in saturation. And we're at 647 millivolts, which is real close to 650, so I'll say that that's good enough. Now we can go up here to this gray area and right click. And there's two important things here. There's back annotate and create reference point. Back annotate will take your new variables, press OK here, where we want to back annotate variables and parameters, and it will upload them to your design variables. Similarly, with create reference point, it will just edit your starting point if you want to optimize again so it doesn't have to start all over. That's okay there. So to wrap this up, we optimized a very simple voltage divider circuit uh, to output a given voltage that we want. Uh, we use local optimization, and uh, it took about 47 iterations until we got what we want. So for a circuit like that, 47 iterations, it took a minute uh, to optimize, that's pretty quick. Uh, for more complex circuits with more design variables, it's going to take even longer. So I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you for watching.